Hey guys, I'm Mark and this is my friend John. John helps out at the nursery and he lives right down the road from the farm. And we're over at his house today because he's got a lot of trees in flower that uh, I wanted to come over and see. And we thought we'd do a video about flowering trees. Uh, this is a great time of year to do it. It's about late May uh, and here in Maryland, he's got, he's got quite a few things in bloom. Uh, so maybe we'll start here with, uh, with these guys, which are really impressive. Um, so John, what, what do you want to say about these? Yeah, well, first of all, thanks for um, uh, coming over, and especially during the busy season yeah. um, at, the, at the farm. Um, well, but it's yeah, this down is, a little now, so it's But uh, this, is, it's this is prime time yeah. in Maryland um, to see flowering trees and shrubs. So, um, so what we're standing in front of right now is a red horse chestnut. Mm -hmm. So that's Aeschylus carnea. Okay. Um, there are um, several popular cultivars, um, Fort McNair, O'Neill, and Barodii, um, but you can see that they have these beautiful, beautiful inflores inflorescences, um, and uh, hummingbirds like these. I've actually seen hummingbirds flitting, you know, yeah. from one okay. to, to another, and they're just so impressive. Well, it's kind of got that, like, little trumpet shape, almost sort of, sort of looking flower to it. I mean, not, not quite a true trumpet, but, like, it's uh, definitely, it's got that, that shape. That's something yeah. that very, very attractive trees, after. nice big leaves. And I even like um, in this, earlier in the spring when the leaves are getting ready to pop out, it's a big fat bud that looks like a golf ball. Oh, yeah. They're really, really fun. So it's just fun to just to watch those. Are they fuzzy at all? Before they, they pop. A little bit? Uh, I don't remember them being like that, but again, they're just really big. So it's okay. fun. And the tree has a really nice structure. So we have a little grove of three of them here. How old are these trees, would you say? Like, what, when did you put them in and how big were they these when are you put the, them in? These are in the, been in the ground about um, 10 years. Okay. And they were probably at least five years old when they went in. So, so you can see how well they've grown. So about um, how tall, were they about as tall as us when they went in or a little taller? Everything on this property, with the exception of maybe three or four trees, fit in my car. Okay. So, which is just a normal, you know, um, passenger sedan. So yeah. it's not, you okay. know, a truck or anything. All right. They fit in there and they've grown up. So, oh, wow. Yeah. And that's in general, you think, I mean, I've, I've always thought that putting in younger trees in general winds up giving you a healthier tree in the end. Is that? Is that yeah. So, you know, when you put a smaller tree in, um, it might start off against smaller, but um, it gives the, the roots a chance to spread out. Um, and then, you know, after three to five years, oftentimes they'll catch up to the size it was, you would have right. had if you put in a larger tree I, uh, because the roots aren't struggling to get established. I noticed that at my mom's house with a bunch of arborvitaes that she put in. We put in some smaller ones and uh, she also got some big ones from another nursery. And I, I told her, I tried to tell her, I said, mom, these small ones are going to catch <laughs> up. But uh, she said, well, I want a big now. And, Sure enough, now they're like all the same size, like yeah. three, three, four years it's later. It's tempting to get that immediate impact, but really right. in the long run for the health of the plant, oftentimes it just makes more sense to try to do yeah. a smaller one. Yeah. And you're not getting all that, that crazy like root bound situation too. A lot of times that you could find with older trees easier that are plant hot for a long time. Yeah. It's easier to plant. It's a less expensive plant. Mm -hmm. um, easier to water <laughs> the first few years until they really get going. Okay. So. All right. Anyway, so there's the red horse chestnut. Okay. What about this guy over here? That's got some, uh, I mean, the, the blooms on it are, they don't really uh, contrast so much against the foliage. So I'm not so sure that the camera can pick it up, but, but um, standing underneath of it right, right. now, it's, it's really pretty. So actually it's not blooming just yet. I don't know okay. um, if you can see here. <laughs> yeah, this one, well, there's a, there's a couple going up here. You can see there's, there's one open, see right All above right. us here. Little oh, there guy. it is. It's, it's like open. Little, yeah, like a little yellow. Yeah. One. So this is a um, sweet bay magnolia, okay. and this cultivar is called um, Moonglow. All right. It is semi evergreen. So if we have a mild winter, the leaves stay on, which is nice. That is nice. Um, but it is. It's a native plant. You get these white flowers, which again you found way up there. <laughs> um, eventually, the lower ones will bloom, and they have sort of a lemony scent to them. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's really, really nice. I have it down here in this lower area because. It's a little bit wetter, and they do like wetter conditions. Okay. Oh, that's good to know. And so. this will this to be a pretty old tree, won't it? Aren't they somewhat long-lived? Um, yeah, it should do really well here. Um, again, very fast growing. This tree has been in here um, not even as long as the red horse chestnuts have been here. Okay. And I should have mentioned with the red horse chestnuts that the reason they're planted down here away from the house yeah. is because if they do make, um, you know, their seeds, mm -hmm. um, that's not something you want on your driveway or on a walkway. 
So down here, they can spread those all over and no one's gonna kill themselves walking on those. Oh, they're tough to, oh, I see. So yeah, because they're, they're, are they spiny too? Like another, yeah, like other they can, types they're of chest spiny. Okay. So, so, you know, make sure you put your tree in the right place so it's not gonna cause you a problem sure. later. So sure. these are never gonna get too big for this spot. They're never gonna have a problem with the seeds. My, uh, my neighbor growing up, it's funny you say that because he's got this, this giant Dawn Redwood right next to his driveway. There's one right there. And it's just one back there. <laughs> well, it's a, it's a gorgeous tree, but it winds up being the perfect tree for when it loses its needles in the fall. They like they stick in right where the windshield wipers are of your car <laughs> right, and that whole quite. area right there. And it's like other than that, it's just like the perfect tree. But if you put it somewhere else, you know, not above your cars, then you know. Right. It's, yeah. It's one of the. It's one of my favorites. Yeah. You want to make sure that they have the conditions that they want to grow well, mm -hmm. and then you want to make sure that it's again not going to cause a problem around the home. Yeah. They, so we're not looking at it right now, but. I have no large trees really close to my house. Okay. So it's never going to fall yeah. and crush my house. Yeah, that's that's good planning. <laughs> Medium like size or small, that's it. Right. Right. That's, okay. that's a good idea. Yeah. There's nothing more. There's nothing worse than having that beautiful, huge, awesome tree and like wondering, oh, do I want to cut it down? But I hate to cut it down, but it's threatening my house. So you know, just be put in that position is exactly. And if yeah. it's not you, it'll be somebody down the road. And it's a shame either way. Right. And then these days, you know, with the internet and really good YouTube videos, you know, you can, there's no reason not to research your tree to see mm -hmm. how big it's going to get to make mm -hmm. sure you are planting it in a place where there's enough room for it. Sure. Sure. And you'll never have that problem of having to make that choice of do I cut it down or right. torture it. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's such a shame. Yeah. You know, and a lot of people, you know, even just to sell your house, it might, it, if you have this enormous tree that's next to your house that, you know, you even know that it's it's strong and it's large and it should be fine. Because some trees, some large trees are stronger than others and more of a threat than others. But, um, you know, a, a home buyer may not necessarily know that and you're put in a position yet again where you might have to cut the thing down just in order to sell your house. Um, so, yeah, good research on the front end is mm -hmm. always a good thing. Exactly. All right, well, I see there's some other dogwoods over here and things. So um, what if we migrate our way that way and kind of maybe start on some of those next? Yeah. All right, Mark, so the next tree we're going to look at is a, is a Kusa dogwood. So these are Asian yeah. dogwoods. Okay. Um, this particular wine is really interesting because it's, it's called Wolf Eyes. That's the cultivar. It's beautiful. It's a selection that was made right here in Maryland um, by Manor View Farm out in Moncton. Oh, really? Yep, out in Moncton, Maryland. Wow. Um, and what's really neat about this one is besides the fact that it's variegated, you can see here on the leaves, uh -huh. that they're green and white yeah but also they're really wavy yes and the reason it's called wolf eyes is the flowers which are small um sort of have a, a green a green flower which is i guess looks like the eye of a wolf yeah yeah um, but and it's a nice tree so any variegated tree because it has less chlorophyll working for it in the leaves less green is going to top out um it's going to be slower growing and possibly top out a little shorter than okay. if it was all green. Okay. So this tree will get about maybe 10 feet tall. Oh, wow. Now, how long has this one been in the ground? This is, you know, I always think everything here has been in the ground about 10 years. <laughs> yeah. But um, this is one of the earlier ones I planted. So it may be as long as, you know, 12, 12, 13 years. Okay. At this point. So you can see this is as big as it's gotten. It's, uh, it's beautiful. I, even you mentioned the variegation. I noticed like the flower petals on this also, like if you look closely, there's right, like a little bit of a slight. variegation, very slight, almost like a hosta leaf, like on the petals themselves. Right, the outside of the petals varieties. are white and, um, yeah. and greener, you know, lime green on the inside. At first from a distance, you don't realize that it's flowering until you get up close on it. It's like, oh wow, look at all the, you know, look at all right. the flowers on well, it. Well, that's another good point about um, variegated trees is that uh, most, tr you know, most of these flowering trees, they're going to flower on average two to three weeks, depending on how hot the temperatures are, what kind okay. of weather we have. All right. Um, but if they have these colorful leaves like this, uh -huh. then it looks from a distance like you have flowers all the time. Right. Right. And then often in the fall and the autumn, uh, you know, the white parts will get a little bit of a pink tinge to them. Yeah. So you'll get three colors on this. You'll have yeah. green, white, and pink, so you, which and you is get, really neat. Oh, you get three phases too. Three, you know, you could be appreciated through a uh, much longer season. You don't have to think about just the flowers being on it as being exactly. the, main, the main show. Exactly. That's cool. And then you notice here too, I've placed this tree uh, against a darker background. So we have the, yeah. you know, the Japanese maple in the background that's yeah. dark. Yep. We have some other trees. We have an evergreen right there. 
Right. Um, that's really important for um, you know highlighting and making the lighter colors pop. Oh yeah, it really this showcases was, it. Yeah, if this was just against blue sky, it would still be showy, but it wouldn't be as showy. Right, definitely. Well, it's you know doing your homework and doing and doing a little bit of planning before you uh, break the shovel out is always you know exactly. just another example of that. Very nice, very nice. Okay. All right. Well, you want to check out a few other dogwoods? Or yeah. So let's go look think? at a dogwood that's a cross between one of our native dogwoods, the Pacific Coast dogwood, okay. and a Coosa dogwood. Okay. Uh, and see, you know, what that what that cross brings. Okay. All right. Cool. Okay. Let's go check it out. Well, this one is really really cool. Uh, when we first pulled up, this one caught my eye. I mean, you can almost see this from outer space. There's so much white on it. So this is another dogwood, right? Right. So this is actually a cross between. Uh, our native, one of our native dogwoods, a Pacific Coast dogwood, right. uh, Cornus nutellii, and um, an Akusa dogwood. Okay. Uh, so it was crossed by um, uh, uh, Orton, uh, and it's part of the Rutgers program on the Stellar Dogwood program. All right. Uh, and what they were trying to achieve is these beautiful big flowers. They certainly got them. More I mean, disease resistant plant uh, uh, that would do well, you know, in, in uh, harsher conditions. And I mean, look at this. So this yeah, is. Yeah, I mean, it's really doing well. Right. So this is Cusa Venus. Okay. Uh, and I think it's well named because it really is beautiful. Yes. I mean, the, the flowers are as big as my hand. I've never seen a dogwood with flowers yeah, this big. Incredible. It's so incredible. that's what comes from the. That's what comes from the um, the Pacific Coast dogwood. They're very okay. really large. But again, they don't always like the conditions, especially you know the harsh conditions we have in the summer here in the Mid Atlantic. Right. But the Cusa dogwoods are really tough. Okay. Um, yeah, and so they get there again. So they've achieved the best characteristics of both. I see. Yeah, they get the resilience from the Kusa. And you can't get any so, showier than this. No, you really can't. I mean, this is incredible. And it, and it, you, from different light angles too. I mean, if you're in the shade part of it, like right now we're standing out in the bright sun, and it really shows off well. But we were walking underneath of it, and you can kind of look up through it in the shade. It looks like wild like that too. Yeah, this yeah, would be what? ideal if you had a yard with a really steep slope or terraces and you yeah. um, could position it so that you could look down on it. Oh yeah. And you'd see all the layers and all that white that would all be at cool. the same time. That would be cool. That's a fantastic tree. How long has this been in the ground, do you think? This one, again, again about 10, 10 years. years. Yeah. <laughs> so I must have been really busy 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and actually I found this uh, at a nursery that's um, unfortunately not in business anymore, but. Um, had some really wonderful plants up in New Jersey, um, uh, but you know, you just—that's what I would do is on weekends. You know, you just drive out someplace, either visiting a public garden, which are wonderful resources, mm -hmm. or you know, you go to a nursery. Um, these places where people really love plants, yeah. uh, and you find these really special cultivars. Yeah. Um, so when you find them, get them because you might not see them again. Right. Certain you know, things. And it had to had the rule had to fit in the car. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So this was just you know a little plant that I put here. Um, it'd be nice mm -hmm. if it was a little further out, but um, you don't oh. always get it perfectly right on how how big they'll grow. Oh, this 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 is beautiful. I just I like this one so much. Okay. Well, you want to go on to another dogwood? I think you said you had a weeping one. Yeah. So let's look at a Kusa dogwood, but that's weeping. All right. All right. Let's go. All right. Oh, well, this is our weeping one, right? Yeah, so with this, this is a, um, a weeping Kusa dogwood, but it's also variegated. If you look at these leaves, you can see mm -hmm. that again, just like the wolf eye right. one that we saw before, it's got a lot of variegation, not quite as wavy in the leaves, mm -hmm. but the flowers look similar. Yeah. Small flowers, not that noticeable. Um, but so this cultivar is called um, Kristen Lipka. And you know, it's got everything going for it. It's got the variegation, yeah. toughness, yeah. beautiful weeping form. It's gorgeous. Uh, and the reason I put it here is because a few feet over, I have these big limelight hydrangeas. Okay. So when they bloom midsummer, mid to end of summer, they're kind of that lime white, you know, green, and, and it, it matches the leaves that. here perfectly. Okay. So you have an echo of color from one place coming from flowers with color from you know in another spot yeah man coming from the leaves I like it that's awesome they're uh they, how big will something like this get I mean I know it's a weeping form so it usually takes a little longer right to, and to variegated reach. so it's gonna grow and variegated, slowly you're saying yeah because the chlorophyll right so uh, not as much chlorophyll to help it grow um so this would get this could get twice the size um with it being in a lot of shade here from the red maples from the acer rubrum 
um, it's going to grow even slower. But I did that to prevent the leaves, the variegated leaves, from, from scorching. Um, we have a little bit of that here. I'm not sure if that was from cold damage um, or just the sun hitting them and, and sure. burning some of the variegated leaves. Sure. And as is these, a problem. Well, and as these get a lot larger, you could probably limb them up too, you know, to, to complement with this as it gets bigger. Right. That's always a trade off when you plant. Uh, trees that are, want to be on the edge of a yeah. wood line yeah. is how much do you limb up the other trees? Right. I, would, I love to see trees with branches all the way to the ground, right. but for practical reasons, for mowing, weeding, maintaining them, keeping invasive vines out of them, sure. you, know, you want to have them limbed up a little bit, sure. otherwise oh. it can be really awkward. And once this gets to be an enormous tree too, it's going to be a higher canopy, the, the, um, the light's going to come through and be a little more filtered and stuff, so you're going to get the advantages of right. that. Right, sure. and then this Probably will be a nice on. light mound underneath it yeah. that will be a pop of color, yeah. as, you know, all season long, as long as the leaves are out on it. And oh. then in the winter, the structure is interesting because it's a weeping form instead of just upright. It's a shame you gotta wait so long. That's like it's it's like the fun, and it's also like the the bad part about it, though. It's like I want to see it, you know the anticipation of of imagining what it's gonna look like in your head, and then uh, you know yeah, just plants, waiting for it year after year. Plants are dynamic, you know, so they don't you don't buy them one size and they stay that size. Things grow, yeah. and so you have to you know gardens evolve, landscapes evolve, and mm -hmm. so you have to make sure that you're constantly working with it and adjusting. Yeah, yeah, you want to play that line too of when. Do you want to see impact now or do you want to you know really take your time and see its full glory you know 20 30 years from now and plan it out that way right so i'm just I'm trying hoping, to find those mediums too and where you want to be yeah i'm hoping that i've planted here for the long game so i you yeah. know i have oaks i have trees that take you know many years to get their full character yeah uh and a lot of, i know a lot of people they want to see something look impressive in the first five years but a lot of those trees may only live 30, 40 years. Mm -hmm. And I know that sounds like a long time, right. but wouldn't it be great if it looked really incredible like some of the English estates or some of the, you know, the big public gardens where a tree, you know, is 200 years old and right. it looks incredible. It's huge. Right. Um, we can do that in our home landscapes as long as we have room sure, I to mean, do it, that. It like, might only be one tree, but why not plant something that can do that right right i mean some of these oaks and some like white oaks and these dawn redwoods i mean hundreds and hundreds of years they can they can go to live so if you're making a choice you know what if you're gonna have something that's gonna live 50 years or something that could live 800 years you know, it's just something to think about for yeah. sure 800 years is a bit much but you know well, uh, yeah. i'll settle for 300 300 yeah. would be kind of so, impressive you know we always try to be optimistic though, right? <laughs> right you know right. that's the that's the biggest part of gardening i think right. it's just so pure maybe optimism. it's a bristlecone pine or something and it's going to live to be 800 years old yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay all right well do we have any more dogwoods that you want to go on to you have actually so we're going to just now let's go see what a regular coosa dogwood looks like okay which are still impressive yeah um but without the variegation you can see the size difference if nothing else sure all right let's go okay. check it out so regular coosa yeah so uh again so again we saw um a weeping variegated coosa dogwood mm -hmm. we saw the wolf eyes which is also variegated with wavy leaves now this is uh you know just a regular straight coosa yeah. Um, you can see the flowers are a little bit bigger. Mm -hmm. um, the leaves are straight green, still have a little bit of a wave to them. And you can see it's much larger. Yeah. So these have all been in the ground about the same amount of time. They've all been, you know, in there like 10, 12 years, but much, much bigger because again, more chlorophyll going yeah, on. Just the first just, aspect of having darker leaves and more greener leaves and more. Right. Uh, it's just, it's able to, you know, convert more sunlight into, uh, into food to grow. Wow. Um, and again, you know, these are really beautiful. These turn great color in the fall. Yeah. Um, beautiful, beautiful coloring. And they get these big seeds uh, capsules on them. Um, they look like big strawberries. Yeah. Um, so again, this is one that I wouldn't plant on my driveway because you're going to have those big, you know, seed things, big red seed things yeah. uh, all over the place. Okay. Um, but a lot of the birds like to eat them. Okay. Too, even though this is not a native tree. Right. It's still a, a benefit still, to wildlife. They're still attractive. I've seen squirrels eating them too. Awesome. Awesome, and they have they have pink uh, ones too, don't they? Yeah, there pink are some pink ones. selections of uh, dogwoods, uh, the Coosa dogwoods as well. Okay. So again, but nice disease resistance, a little bit sure. cold hardier, um, and actually when they get big, it's, I know it's very difficult to see. Um, this one doesn't have a lot going on, but the bark can get really uh, mottled um, oh, yeah. in different colors, so yeah. that can be a really showy That's aspect really, too. That's always again, really nice. I like to leave a lot of the lower branches on my trees, yeah. um, just because it's more from you know to look at. Well, we but the, the bark thing. can be really showy. We've got a, we only use a certain type of mower 
at, uh, at the farm because it's easier to sort of lift branches up as you're cutting and things. And right. I guess it makes life a little Instead easier. Instead of getting in the face with a, them. Right. right. It's a little <laughs> more difficult on a zero turn, but. Exactly. Okay. So, All right. Okay. So that's the straight All right, Kusa. So that's the straight wood. Kusa. All right. And then we got the Southern Mag, right? Yeah. We, we walked past this, but um, on our way here, but we can't ignore this. So again, yeah. this is Magnolia Grandiflora. Um, Bracken's Brown Beauty, and the reason it's called that is because you can see it's got a little bit of a brown indentum on the back yeah. of the leaf. So almost like a, like a yak root indentum or something. Yes. Like how they sort of Yeah, exactly. Sort of right. And you see like here's a flower bud getting ready to yep. start popping out here when it gets warmer. Yeah, how long do um, you think we're away from that? Another few weeks? Maybe uh, before this uh, starts happening up? Oh, well, here's a really big one right here. Oh, really, yeah, really big bud right there. There's another one. So, yeah, so I think it'll be maybe a couple more weeks at least. Okay. Um, Will these be pink or white or a little bit of a... White, big, white, waxy flowers. Yeah. And again, they smell like lemons. They smell really, really good. Yeah. And the bees love them. You see the bees just sort of dancing in circles around the, you know, the inside of the flower, picking up pollen. And we're Amazing. sort of on the cusp a little bit for, uh, for you know, in terms of latitude, in terms of, uh, you know, how hardy these would be. Right, you couldn't go a whole lot more north, but I know there's there's some varieties that are probably a little yeah. hardier than others, right? Right. So we're to... in zone six, and this actually Bracken's Brown Beauty is one of the tougher ones. Okay. Um, and it is evergreen, and you'll notice that you know you see these leaves that look yellow. This tree is not sick. <laughs> yeah. This is just the older leaves getting you know pushed out yeah. um, for some of the newer growth. Okay. So um, so you that's see holly okay. trees and stuff do that too. Yeah, it's okay. Mm -hmm. um, if it were the newer ones that were doing that, then I would check to see, you know, if I have a, a nutrient deficiency in the soil or there's okay. something else going on with the tree. But seeing these older leaves go yellow like this um, is is perfectly normal. Okay. And the same thing. This tree is about 10 years, 12 years. This 15, is one or? of the first ones I planted, so maybe okay. it's closer to 15 years in the ground. All right. Well, that's and good. it wasn't very big when it went in. That's and a lot of impact for 15 years. They are slow growing. Yeah. But it really, you know, owns this corner of the property right now. Sure. Here. Yeah, it really stands out. Yeah, and these will get pretty old too, right? Yeah. Occasionally, get... again, if we have a really cold winter, mm -hmm. they could get cold damage, so all these leaves could go black. Oh. And usually, um, if it's you know hasn't gotten really cold then they'll just push out new growth in the spring. So again, if all your leaves go black and fall off because it was cold, it doesn't mean that the tree's dead. Okay, just give, give it, it a chance. chance to leaf out again and see how it does. All right, all right, good to know. All right, well, um, do you want to push on to this one? What's this guy over here? Because this is like just sure. about to erupt, it looks like, with, <laughs> yeah, uh, so, with blooms. So this tree, this is an interesting story. So uh, this is a Styrax japonicum. So it's a, it's a uh, snowbell, flowering snowbell, Japanese snowbell. Um, and you can see here's the here's the little snow bells just coming out right yeah. here. They do look um, like little bells. And you can see again how big they are. They're only about maybe a half inch or so um, size. This was supposed to be a selection called Pink Chimes. Yeah. So and you these got one of those, all uh, been mixed up on you a little bit, huh? No. What happened was the graft overtake. Or? The, the graft died. So okay. the whole top of the plant died. All right. And the rootstock grew. And then I noticed that the grew stock was white, and I said, "You know what? <laughs> I, I got the, I have the plant. It's yeah. growing well. The rootstock's growing well. It's still showy. It's still beautiful. Yeah, that sure is. So I let it grow, and this is what it developed into. Well, that's awesome. So again, not pink chimes, but you know, it's just nice to but, have this. And it'll yeah, we'll take be, it. <laughs> it'll be a big white cloud in about another week. It sure will. I mean, it is loaded. It is just loaded with blossoms that are just about to pop. So that's going right. to be. I gotta, I gotta come back over here to see that one for right. sure. So what I want to show you, though, um, so we'll see one other snowbell first, a native snowbell, okay, uh, fragrant snowbell. But then I want to show you one that has flowers that are twice as big as this. Okay. All right. One that actually came out the way that maybe yes. you intended it to be. It did, although that's got another story, too. <laughs> so this tree is like, t like a totally different animal, looks like, than what we were just looking at. Right. It's so the same again, species. Yeah. Right? So but, this is a native. It's also Styrax. Mm -hmm. But it, instead of Styrax japonica, this is Styrax obasia. Okay. Uh, and it's fragrant. Um, you can see the flowers That's are cool. in uh, these long like racemes oh instead of separate. Um, they're a little bit bigger, and it does smell good. It smells incredible. Um, I think a lemony, almost vanilla type of 
I, don't, I, I guess lemony vanilla right. is kind of how it smells is. like spring. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's a perfect. Word right. For it. Um, what I really like is look at the size of these leaves too. These big sure. round leaves. Yeah, they're wonderful. Really, really beautiful. This is a little bit of a younger tree too. So right. this tree I I got as a seedling. Um, oh. I went to a horticulture club meeting. Um, and we we're, you know, trading plants, fun plants. And uh, I saw, you know, a little seedling of this and I didn't have one. I had to try it. Sure. So I put it in the ground. It grew really well for the first three years and it bloomed for the first time. And then it got ambrosia beetle. Mm. So I'm looking at it and I see all these little white little threads coming out of the trunk. Looked it up, ambrosia beetle. So I thought, uh, can we save this? So I let the tree do its thing. That part of the trunk died, you know, I, I cut that off. I, I disposed of that piece so that the beetles wouldn't spread. Okay. So I didn't compost it. Um, and then the, the tree, you know, shot up new branches. So it, it bounced back and look at it now. Yeah. I so mean, if it's... I had, you know, hit it with chemicals or just cut it down and given up on it, I wouldn't have this beautiful tree right now. Well, yeah, just, uh, just wait back and hold back and, and Some... see what happens. Right, it's like, let's, let's see what nature's gonna do on our own. Oh man. That's, so, that is beautiful. Very beautiful tree. I w you could cut these and put these in a vase too, if you wanted to. Really, maybe re remove a few tree or uh, remove a few leaves. They'd be awesome in a vase, probably. Yeah, if I was ever going to prune it, I'd do that. But um, I know I like to. They last longer if <laughs> you leave them on the tree. Right. So right. I like to do that and just walk around, and you know, it gives me a reason to get out of the house right. and and get some exercise and walk around and see what's happening. Definitely. Okay. Well, that's awesome, man. All right. So now let's go look at the other styrax. With the big flowers okay so same as, the, this. same as the first one but big flowers um you'll, you'll see they're actually maybe a little bit bigger than that okay all right all right let's go check it let's out head over here so here's another styrax japonica but it is emerald pagoda all right so named variety and the reason that they selected this is you can just see look at these flowers they're bigger than the first one that we looked at mm -hmm. Um, so it's a little earlier this one's like already uh yeah it's like full bloom where the other one was just about to uh to start right so sometimes really that's up. due to where it's located the exposure how much sun it's getting okay there's a lot of rock in this area so it's a little bit warmer okay more protected that's um a, all right but it also is possible that it's just it's it's blooming earlier so but again really really impressive really showy um if you notice i planted this on a slight slope uh -huh. so that as we walk by we can look up at it because yeah. that's where you're going to appreciate all the you bells can see, well we, i keep doing this like i keep and like I'm tempted to do this, keep looking up at them for exactly that reason. Right. It's so just, if I had planted so this to... low and we're looking at it from up above, right. you're not going to see a lot. You're going to see a lot of the leaves because, right. again, the bells hang down. Right. So we want to be able to look at it from bottom up. Definitely something you want above you. Right. Well, so there are smart. lots of trees, too, that will do that. So, again, if you know that the flowers hang down, try to do it if you can elevated so you're going to be able to appreciate that. That's a really good tip. Awesome, man. Right. Well, this one's this one's got a great fragrance to it as well. Right. It's pretty much same as the other one, but man, I just I can't get enough of that. Yeah. <laughs> That's um, one of the things I don't know if you can see this, but if you look down here on the bark, I don't know if that's if that's viewable or yeah. not, but you can see some scarring there. Is that from a buck? That's from deer. Yeah. Deer damage. So what I do with a lot of my plants, because some of these things, you know, they're hard to find. It's a bit of an investment occasionally. So um, I will protect them with uh, chicken wire or some sort mm -hmm. of fencing around it. Sure. At least until the tree gets big enough that hopefully if it gets rubbed mm -hmm. or, you know, browsed, that it's not going to kill it outright because, you know, I might never find another one of these. Right. Um, so yeah, you, you know. don't often think about it. I mean, it might, in a lot of cases, it might be something that they don't even want to eat, but it's just that it's the right shape that when they're taking the velvet off their antlers, then this is what we get. Right. Again, if they're flexible and they bend, they, mm -hmm. that's what they really like. Yeah. So once the tree stiffens up and gets older, basically a brand new young tree, that's what they love. Very Seems susceptible. Like, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Those whips they like. Yeah. So, and again, this is also, I think, impressive against the smoke tree. So this is, uh, uh, Cotinus um, cross between Cocagiria and Obovatus, it's Grace. Okay. So it's got the nice dark color of Cocagiria, but it's um, the size of Obovatus, our native smoke tree. Okay. So and you can see the beautiful purple inflorescences on that. Oh, that's a great contrast for this against the dark. Right. That's awesome. Yeah, that's a, that's a big guy back there. It's been in the ground quite a while. It's uh, getting a little rangy, but um, it's still beautiful. Yeah, um, especially in the morning on a misty morning 
when you oh, have yeah. the all the you know the the dew in the um in the flowers mm -hmm. and you see the light coming from the back of it lighting it up yeah. it's really really impressive i bet it kind of like sparkles sort of or does some sort of yeah that'd be interesting i'd love to see that right so again you know it's all sighting it's like where you put it right the way the light shines through and mm -hmm. interesting many factors to consider in designing your landscape all right all right well where do you want to go now all right let's go maybe look at the fringe tree okay all right let's go <laughs> See a different kind of flower. Yeah. Now we're going to go all the way back. All right. So you said this is a fringe tree. Right. So this is Chiononanthus virginiana. So it's a it's got a smell to it too. native tree. Um, right. This has all kinds of common names. So um, gray beard, father gray beard, um, you know, foam tree. It's just incredible in uh, frothy blooms. This Frothy's is a, male. a good word for it. Yeah, and they're kind of cream color. It's not pure white, um, but it's so beautiful when it blooms. And um, uh, this is a male tree. So the females, the flowers are um, sometimes a little bit fewer flowers. Okay. But if you have cross pollination, if you had a male and a female tree, you know, near each other, the female makes these um, these interesting um, dark purple droops. Um, okay as fruit on them oh that's but awesome. this is a male so um do you pretty much is, is this one of those things where you can figure out what you, whether you got a male or a female early on or is you just kind of like luck of the draw sort of thing usually if it when it blooms is what you can tell with these okay um there is such thing as a um a, a chinese uh fringe tree mm -hmm. so that's chiananthus retusus it's a little bit smaller tree um the blooms are a little bit different they're held differently um, but I, I like when I can, you know, being able to plant some of our native trees. Sure. Uh, and again, this is just, it's really, you know, really impressive. Uh, early on, I tried to grow this as a single trunk tree, but it didn't want to do that. The tree told me <laughs> that single trunk was going to be multiple trunks, no matter yeah. how many times I pruned it. It kept shooting them out. Yeah. Um, so I stopped fighting it and I let it become this big, huge mound that you see right now. Uh, just um, let nature do its thing. That's, yeah. that's great. A little tricky to, to weed underneath and, um, you know, keep it ha um, clean underneath, but it's, it's worth the trouble because it's just beautiful. It is beautiful. Well, that's, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for, uh, for flowering trees then, I guess. Uh, but there's, there's a bunch of stuff that you have here on your property. So, we, well, we were talking and we think that we're going to break this up and do a couple more videos, at least a couple more uh, of different groups I guess, of things that are either flowers that are blooming or different like variegated leaves and things like that. Uh, but for sake of this video, I think this is a really good one. Uh, we covered a lot of the, the uh, flowering trees that do well in our area and that are blooming right now. Um, right, yeah, this is just what's blooming now. <laughs> so, yeah, so there's a lot more to come. Yeah, interesting but, leaves, um, lots of fun shrubs too. Okay. So um, yeah, let's and We'll probably do another one even like fall color that would be a great one Absolutely. to come back and do the so fall I color I grew here. up in New England <laughs> and you know, this is beautiful, but fall color is you have to have the fall color. Yeah. So All right. yeah, definitely, you know, we won't film that now, obviously well, come you get, back in a few months. You got the sugar maples out front. That's yeah. The, I got, those look like they were one of the first things you put in. So we can yeah, tell there's, you there's England, lots England of great things. There. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, John. And, uh, well, thank you guys for watching our video. I hope you liked it and, uh, see you next time.